A very good evening to all of you and good afternoon to Dr. Zalong over there in UK. We IEEE MSIT student branch is an initiative to bring exposure to the members about the advancement in the technical field, build confidence and interaction with experts. It's envisioned to lead a wave of change through its technical advance to the betterment of the society. We, in collaboration with the Signal Processing Society Delhi chapter, which was formed on February 11, 2015. Thereon, this chapter has been making continuous efforts to support the interaction of young learners with the experienced professionals in the field of signal processing under the patronage of IEEE. Today, we have with us Dr. Zalong Li. He's a lecturer at the School of Computer Science and Electronics Engineering, University of Essex. His research lies in the interplay of coding, signal processing, and communications, with the major objective of bridging theory and practice as much as possible. He is a senior member of IEEE and an associated editor of IEEE Access and Frontiers in Communications and Networks. He's a general co-chair of 2021 International Workshop on Signal Design and its Applications in Communication and a TPC co-chair of the 2020 IEEE International Conference and Advances Advanced Network and Telecommunications Systems. We have with us our branch, our branch counselor, Dr. Anupama Kaushik. So I would request ma'am to have a few words and welcome doc Dr. Zalong to present with us the session on 5G and beyond. Am I uh, audible now? Good evening, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Thank you, Rakshit. I welcome uh, Professor Samli for the session. Uh, he's such a great personality and really happy to have him here and, and, and brighten us for a work. And we will give a all the students as well as uh, even uh, faculty members and it's really a pleasure to have you us today. Thank you. So let us now hear from uh, Dr. Zalong and have, have his words on the topic for today that is 5G and beyond. We welcome you sir. So I'll just help you with these screen share access. my screen now. Yes, sir, that's visible. Okay, okay, good, good. And okay. Sorry to uh, very welcome. So can you give me a mic a little near? 
the voice is a bit low you hear me now thank you so much you hear me now that's better now yeah it's loud enough okay good 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 yeah all right uh all right maybe i think uh, just now i should uh, put my uh that to be to be here i think that might be might be better so let me do it again oh can you hear me Yes, That's good now. It's audible. Yes. I mean, compare with the, the case, my earphone. I mean, which one is louder? Which one is louder? I think uh, this one is better. This one All is right. even okay. better. Okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let's start. Okay. Sure. And For, for to my to my talk, ladies and gentlemen, and my name is Zelong, and and before I, uh, yeah. So before my presentation, I I would like to have a uh, some very brief introduction about my my university, and so so the University of Essex was uh, actually uh, is a uh, is actually a very young university. Founded in 1965, and in UK we have many university, and uh, some are focused on on research, some are uh, focused on the uh, and the University of of Essex is very is very unique, and uh, so in uh, and let's see where I can write. no I cannot write it's hard. You see, and University of Essex is very unique, and uh, uh, because it actually excels both in the research and uh, and the higher education. In two thousand, so for example, in uh, in two thousand eighteen, we actually got the a, the award the award of University of the, the Year, and and in K, you know, we we have a very um prestigious ranking which is called a ref ref ranking it is a national ranking for all the for uh for all the uk university and the university of essex um is actually one of the top 20 in our uh last uh, ref uh competition and uh, in terms of location here is basically here is london and uh, and this is a Cambridge and the University of Essex basically is, is just a train to, to London and one hour by uh, and uh, one hour to Cambridge by, by car. And uh, the main campus located in, in Colchester, uh, it is one, uh, it's a very, very old town. Um, so, uh, so uh, my school is called the uh, CSEE, Computer Electronics Engineering, and it has the uh, uh, strengths in, in AI, machine learning, neuro neuro engineering, and uh, robotics. And my research is actually focused on on communication. And of course, nowadays I'm also using some machine learning AI to to do the research on the communication. And I have used a, a number of tools to, from the coding signal pro processing to, uh, to uh, address some communication um, problem. And so here is a, just a very a, a brief uh, timeline about my, my my research. If you want to know more details ab about my research, you can just go to this my my Google link. And I joined the University of Essex in December 2019. And before this, I worked as a senior research fellow in University of Surrey. And so this, uh, the, the talk that I'm going to present uh, is actually mainly based on my 
my research from University of Surrey. And before this, I, I spent many years in Singapore after I had got my, my bachelor's degree and master's degree from China. And so the main, the, uh, the title of this topic is on the new house on codomain norma. And uh, so norma is a very uh, new uh, and uh, emerging techniques, uh, you know, for the 5G communication. And nowadays we have two types of norma. One is the whole domain norma, the other is uh, the power domain norma. Basically the power domain norma is, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, so for that one, it actually, for different user, they will use a different, uh, uh, so for, for that one, you know, different user will actually use, uh, will, will, will use different, uh, uh, you know, power, power level. Whereas for the code domain, normal different users are separated by by the code books. Uh, so, so I will first spend uh, a few slides to introduce the resource background, and then I I and since this talk is on the on the code domain normal, so we have two types of uh, uh, code domain normal system. One is based on the sparse code book, the other is based on the dense code book. And so I will show you some, a lot of uh, comparison results. And then in the last part, I will give out my and the future work. And this talk is actually based on my new, uh, my, my, my paper uh, right here. If you have any a, a mobile phone, you probably can take a, a picture for the link here. You can get, actually get this, uh, you can actually uh, get the full paper from, from this link here. Uh, yeah, now um, mobile, so this table shows us the mobile evolution from 1G to, to 5G. And 1G actually started uh, um, about uh, 40 years ago in 1981 um, with a very uh, small data uh, rate, two, 2K. And so actually at that time, you know, the 1G system can only pro pro provide very, very basic uh, voice communication. And of course, the a mobile phone at that time was, uh, you know, uh, were very funky. But starting from 1G, we have the two, we have a 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. And in UK, we, we already L5G network in, in use. Uh, we have uh, many, many city and, 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 you know, we actually plan to from 4G to, to 5G. And the same can be, can be said for some, uh, for some, some other country, for, for example, Korea, uh, Singapore, uh, you, uh, you know, and China, I, I believe this will also be the same for, for India. And so, we so basically we this table and you can see that the we have uh you know the in terms of the, the data rate you know that is becoming higher and higher start right from uh, uh uh starting from 2k 2k and then 5g uh, uh actually you know aims to support the data rate of up to uh, 10 gigabit per a second or even even higher. So now the, the question is, what's the major difference between 4G and 5G? And uh, can we say, somebody says that for 5G means a higher transmission rate. So I'm going to answer this question today. So basically we can see that, you know, in the 5G era, we need to support more and more user and more and more application. So basically, and essentially, you know, uh, you know, 5G needs to support more and more vertical industry. You know, for example, a smart home, smart city, smart health. And, uh, and right now you can see from this picture that we're able to, uh, we talking the use of uh, 5G networks for the remote surgery. And uh, 
uh, so and and we can also use the 5G for the uh, to provide the autonomous driving. And in addition to 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 that, another very promising uh, vertical industry is for the factories of the future. Uh, so this so compared with uh, 4G, and we can see that you know a major um, a motivation for us is that we need to provide the machine type communication for mass connectivity because uh, because of uh, a wide range of uh, vertical uh, vertical industry. And from this picture, you can see uh, uh, three picture for for a factory in, in in Taiwan. And just now I have mentioned about. Uh, 5G can be used for the factories of the future. Now the the question is that what does the um, and this mean for the factory for factories of the future? And um, for that, I would like to say uh, uh, introduce a little bit about the Clear 5G project. Uh, you can basically you can load down this uh, the link here, and this is the web page of this Clear 5G, and you, you, uh, and there are many uh, Clear 5G deliverable report which are open for downloading and basically this is uh the eu and taiwan project in eu you can see partner here taiwan we have many partners here and the the um clear 5g is a very good uh, um is now the project really focusing on the machine type and uh, urlc URLC refers to the ultra reliable and low latency communication. So basically, the for the 4G system, and our the latency is in the order of 100 millisecond. Whereas in the in the 5G era, for some mission critical communication, we aim to to provide the latency down to one millisecond, and uh, with the reliability. Or 99.999. So this uh, percent. So this means that you know if we we need to send out uh, um, you know one meaning one meaning packet. Maximally, you know there um, we can have only one packet in in error. So and of course there uh, and uh, for machine type communication we requires that many many and uh, you know many a uh, sensor communication sensor devices should be highly uh, the, the energy efficient. So, um, so, uh, so this also re requires us that how we how we need to improve our uh, the transmitter signal design as well as the signal processing algorithm at the receiver. Um, so, um, since we need to support the a activity. For machine type of communication, so naturally we need to design, you know, a multi-user system, and for that we need to use uh, some advanced XX uh, uh, technology. Uh, so, with uh, if you look at the traditional, uh, the the traditional multiple access technology, and in the one G. Uh, in, in 2G uh, system, we, we use TD, 3G, we use uh, CDMA, 4G, we use uh, OFDMA. Now, in the 5G, uh, we use uh, NORMA, non orthogonal multiple access. Um, so, regarding to this NORMA, and if we consider the, uh, the code domain NORMA, so the, the question here is that, uh, it is very similar to the traditional CDMA system. So uh, 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 we can say that the code domain normal is actually largely inspired by the CDMA system. Uh, and of course, uh, from this point of view, we can say that essentially CDMA is also a type of normal. But actually the difference, major difference here is that the code domain normal system design for the 5G a, a communication system that is uh, mainly for the support of uh, uh, massive connectivity. 
So in the 5G, a uh, major important uh, um, the, the code domain normal system we call this uh, SCMA. The most original idea on SMA, uh, let me remove this one. Yeah, so the one of the most important uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, emerging code normal is called the SMA. The most, but the most original idea is called the, the LDS. And this was actually uh, published in this paper in, in 2008 by researcher from U University of Surrey. And uh, this is a transmitter. This is a receiver. Receiver At the transmitter side, we can see multiple users. They do modulation and uh, they do the sequence spreading. At the receiver side, we can see the equation y equals to hx plus, plus w. Um, and so, so essentially at the receiver side, we need to uh, solve this equation, all right? But uh, this equation, um, you know, uh, um, actually this is a rank uh, uh, efficient equation. So this means that the channel, which is H, is actually a fat matrix. So, so this is the, the channel matrix. Fat matrix means that the number of variables that we need to, to solve is actually uh, larger, uh, is much is much larger than the number of uh, equations that we can we can have. So so which is uh, 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 can explain to have this uh, fat matrix. So this means that if we need to use the maximum likelihood uh, receiver to do the decoding. So we will we will suffer from a very high complexity, which is in the order of m to the power of j. Where M refer, refers to the modulation order, uh, where J refers to the number of user. So how we are going to uh, solve this uh, equation? So uh, so the major uh, difference from the traditional CDMA is that in this uh, LDS uh, signal, we use uh, the no density signature. So that re refers to uh, here. You can see an example here. And basically, you know, we will have very sparse sequences because of the the, the sparsity, and uh, so we are able to relate this system equation in a factor graph right here. So, for example, we have twelve, um, uh, uh, you know, time slots, and we have sixteen user. So, in this case, there we can write out, we can and relate it to to this factor graph, and then we can use the massive parsing to decode out this, uh, to to solve this equation in a very efficient way using the massive parsing. So this idea was uh, adopted later on by Huawei. And uh, so in 2014, uh, got this US uh, patent. Um, if you look at here, so, Basically, we uh, for the frequency domain, we have four subcarrier, but we have six user. Okay, and you can see that if we use uh, the OMA transmission, all right, if we use uh, the OMA transmission, then maximally we can support four user. Whereas here we can support six user. So because of this, uh, so we are able to provide the overloading factor of uh, 150, and so. Here you can see an example from this thing here, and so uh, and, and you can you can check this uh, this code book, and uh, so basically for the uh, when we do the do the encoding, uh, for this is for the user one. If user one wants to send the one one one, then we will just uh, select it, uh, out this uh, code word. So this will be the code word for the user two user three, so on and so forth. So all the, the user, they select their own, uh, you know, the, the code word based on the, the input message signal. And then these uh, code words, they are superimposed together and we form uh, this vector. Uh, normally I call this a superimposed code word. And the strings of uh, SCMA, 
is that it actually combines the um, strings of a coding and mod modulation together. So because and because of this, uh, it actually enjoys uh, the so-called uh, constellation shipping gate. The question here is that how we how we design such sparse code book. And suppose that the uh, vector x is my my my, my transmit superimposed code word word at the receiver side because of the noise and because of uh, the multi-user interferences. So the receiver may decode out the transmitter a vector as y. Okay, so basically, you know, x does not equal to y. And we can always calculate out this uh, PEP. All right, so, uh, so uh, we call this pairwise error probability. And we can see that this PEP is actually upper bounded by this value. Okay, it's upper bounded by, by, by this value. So now the, the question here is that we, uh, if we want to minimize this guy, so we just simply need to minimize the upper bound value. So, uh, so this actually refers to the product of uh, multiple uh, fractions right here. And it turns out that we just simply need to maximize the minimal product distance. Okay, and uh, for, for that, uh, how we can achieve this? So basically, uh, in the communication theory, we have two important types of concept, which is called the coding game, the other is diverse order. So in order for us to design very good uh, code book, we wish to uh, design certain you know, multi-dimensional uh, constellation such that you can enjoy a higher diverse order and as well as a higher coding, coding game. Okay, we will come back to these two concepts later. And and so far, the optimal SAMA design is still open. And most of the current design um, start from uh, uh, mother, mother, uh, from uh, mother, multi, uh, uh, mother multi dimensional constellation. And based and starting from this uh, mother constellation, and then we apply a series of, uh, uh, you know, the, the different operations, such as the constellation rotation, interleaving, and, and so on and so, so forth. So this actually gives us an example here. And uh, basically, uh, so far the design, we, uh, the, the current design is actually channel or channel sensitive. So that means that some design is holding for the, the dining cha channel design, are for the for the uplink channel. This uh, short paper published in 2019, we have designed some new sequences, and for for that we call this the uh, the proposed uh, the LDS. Uh, and uh, if you look at that green curve, we have compared our BR performance with the with that of the Huawei Huawei codebook. And you can see that our proposed codebook uh, is able to achieve the you know comparable uh, BR performance in the relay feeding feeding channel. But whereas once we come to the AWG channel, and so the performance gain is uh, uh, you you can see a performance gain here. In terms of the design of code domain norma, we have numerous uh, proposals from submitted to 3GPP. And you can see this uh, two paper here, and they have provided a very good survey, survey work to, to this uh, research. And uh, so this is for SCMA proposed by, uh, by Huawei, and also we have a uh, uh, PDMA. Uh, proposed by Baquet. And uh, in addition to that, we also have a number of schemes based on sequence spreading. Now, among so many different uh, codomain 
uh, normal skin, uh, you may now you may wonder what's the problem, what's the weakness of SMA system. The major problem of uh, SA, one of the major problem is that uh, from very limited diverse order. Just now I have mentioned about this, uh, the concept of the diverse order. And we ideally we wish to to increase the diversity order, you know, um, as much as possible. But the the but the concept of uh, the principle of SMA is actually similar to the CDMA system, where each user so basically we have six user four subcaver, and so each user will spread its signal over two subcaver. So because of this, so this system can only have the maximum diverse order of two for the uncoded system. All right. So now the, the question here is that uh, uh, how we are going to improve this uh, SMA. Okay. If we want to increase this diverse order, so uh, that means that the resultant system can enjoy a better BR performance. But in this case, we won't have such a sparsity anymore, and uh, we will uh, the result in the multiple access system will be dense. So this is a, a major motivation. We started the 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 you know DCMA. Um, so how we can design such a system? We know that in a multi-user communication system, we have the for the uh, uh, message uh, 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 B, and uh, we can always uh, send out a signal using a generator matrix, and this generator matrix uh, corresponds to the spreading sequences or the generator or you know some precoding matrix. So the, the question here is how we can design a very good uh, a uh, you know generator matrix G such that you can enjoy a very large minimal product distance. Uh, in order for us to do this, let me introduce you the uh, the the uh, square matrix V, and so this is so this one refers to the transpose of a random matrix and it is a, a function of a multiple variable c1 to c n so be, so this matrix is a square matrix with order m times m we have a number of uh, construction reported in this two paper and so for each construction we are able to generate a square matrix and so those uh, matrix can be used as the precoding matrix or a uh, uh, transform matrix. Um, so uh, they each of them they have a very large uh, minimum product distance. So we can uh, generate such a you know dense code book using the uh, the com modulation. We we just simply generate a square matrix n times n, and then we just randomly select a few row from this square matrix. So with with this, we can, so basically, if we let n to be 6, q to be 4, and we are able to uh, provide the same overloading factor as that of uh, SMA. Here I am giving you an uh, example. Uh, suppose that the, the m is 6, and you the 3, we can generate this uh, different uh, variable uh, theta one all the way to C six. So with uh, this, then we can simply just uh, uh, generate this uh, six times six square matrix M three. Then we just select four rows, you know, right from this uh, square matrix. Then with with this, and then we can support the overloading factor of uh, one hundred fifty. All right. So uh, how we are going to decode out uh, uh, this? Uh, we code out this uh, DCMA. Here we propose to use the generalized sphere decoder. Sphere decoder 
is actually a uh, very uh, famous detector for the MIMO detection. Um, but the tradition decoder uh, assumes the fact that, that the, the system and equation should be full rank. Whereas here for the code domain normal system, you know, our system equation is actually uh, rank. Uh, if so in order for us to uh, decode it out, so we actually use the, this is the sphere decoder, and we actually follow the this paper right here. All right. So we uh, in the next few slides, I, I'm I will present you a few. Um, some a lot of simulation result to compare SCMA and uh, DCMA. So in this uh, uh, slide, I'm sh uh, showing you the uh, I'm comparing with the the complexity of uh, two type of setting. One is four times six. The other is a uh, five times ten. Uh, for the four times six uh, normal normal setting, we can see that the DCMA actually enjoys uh, a lower complexity. Um, but once we we move to the five times ten, in this case, you know, if we look at this uh, blue curve, so that means that SMA uh, enjoys uh, lower complexity. But actually, for these two, in terms of the complexity, they have a, they are comparable. So how about the, the PPR for the downlink channel? And um, because to use for us to transmit uh, both DCMA and SMA system, so we can, uh, we need to consider the PPR issue at the at the base station transmitter. And here we have considered uh, three types of uh, number of a uh, sub setting, it was 64, uh, 1024, and 8192. Um, with this for all the, the setting, and we can see that DCMA enjoys a lower PPR. Also compare that the, the encoded BR between these two systems. And in the left-hand side, that is channel the right hand side and for the uplink channel now if you br performance of a dcma so compare with the br of a scma and you we we can see very clearly that the br of dcma enjoy a steeper slope so if we re relate this to the diverse order and we can see that actually this uh, we, we can see that DCMA indeed enjoys a higher uh, diverse order. For this system, the diverse order uh, equals to, to five, whereas for this case, SCMA, it can only enjoy the diversity order of two. Also compare the BCH code the uh, uh, error uh, rate, and with for this case, we consider a lower rate, uh, which is about half. Where for this case, we simulate a higher rate, and we can see that for each case, if we consider DCMA with SMA, we can see that uh, DCMA enjoy a better block error rate. Um, so basically, for this uh, two system at the block error rate. Of 10 to the power of minus three, we can enjoy about 1.5 dB again. We have also uh, compared an SCMA and a DCMA using the purple receiver, which is shown here. So basically, we first uh, do the OFDM simulation and uh, the uh, code domain normal multi-user de detection, and then we using turbo to do the decoding. And here shows the uh, the Comparison of a block error rate. And now, if you look at the block error rate of uh, um, this uh, red curve, so that refers to the LDBC coded SMA. 
system. Whereas for this, uh, for this, uh, the, the dark red curve refers to that of the DCMA curve. And you can see that, you know, DCMA still enjoy better block error rate performance. And the same can be said for the other uh, uh, code rate. And we have, uh, so this is for the four times six, and this refers to the five times 10. And for the different setting, in all the cases, we have shown that the block error rate of a DCMA is better. And as you can see, that we have also compared our BR, uh, the block error rate with that of the, for the DCMA, uh, with the linear receiver, all right? And you can see that when the rate, when the overloading factor is low, and the coding rate is also low, and basically using the linear receiver can work. However, once we increase the code rate, and once we increase the overloading factor, and you can see that the a linear receiver for DCMA does not work anymore. I have finished my talk. And so in this talk, I have uh, introduced the USMA and the DCMA. And I have shown you that the DCMA can be designed to enjoy the full diverse order. So that refers to uh, uh, significantly uh, improved uh, BR performance. And for, for this, we have uh, used uh, the generalized sphere coder, and we have compared the complexity as well as uh, the, the PPR. And in terms of the complexity, both systems enjoy a comparable uh, complexity. In terms of PPR, generally speaking, uh, uh, DCMA is lower. We have many future future works for, for this, for example, for the large scale uh, DCMA system, how we can further reduce the complexity. Um, for, for that, uh, we can suggest to, to use the EP uh, decoder. And, uh, and uh, so, of course, the convergence analysis for the different code domain normal system is also a very, very interesting topic. And nowadays, there are several works on the using the deep learning for code, code design and de detection. Um, so the main result of uh, this paper uh, um, have been reported in this paper. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time and explaining everything so beautifully. If there Thank are you. any questions you. that you'd like to ask, sir, please write it in the chat box. This is a request to all the attendees that if they have any questions, please write it in the chat box. All right, so I guess there are no questions in the chat box, so we move ahead. And with this, I'd like to thank Sir for being here, for being so patient and explaining everything in such a detailed manner. I'd like to thank you on behalf of IEEE MSIT. I'd also like to thank Professor Anubha Gupta of IIIT Delhi for, for making this happen. And lastly, I'd like to thank all the attendees and SPS. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, sure. Yeah, I think there is a question coming. Sure. Uh, okay. We can wait for a while. We can wait for a while. All right, we'll wait for a while. If there are questions, please take those out. So, uh, just uh, thank, uh, uh, sir, can you? Uh, uh, help us to know what are the major challenges that we may face in the 5G network that we might have to go ahead with the new technology of 6G? Mm. Sorry, can you repeat your question again? Uh, so uh, can you help us to understand what are the major challenges that uh, we might face in the 5G technology 
that we might have to go uh, ahead with these 6G te uh, technology. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, uh, that is a very, very good question. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and you can see that in, um, in many uh, countries and many universities, uh, people now are doing the research for the 6G already, but I think uh, 6G will be quite different from, from 5G because 6G, uh, uh, you know, that will uh, means, you know, more AI, more machine, machine learning. So that will be, you know, that uh, means that our communication system that will be more intelligent. Um, so, so essentially from the a design point of view, and um, I think now how we are generally leverage the, the tool of, of AI, particularly for the such kind of codebook design or for power domain normal, and so in terms of the physical layer technology. And now we are, we are doing this research now. Um, yeah, so I think the, the major issue here is how we can leverage the, the AI. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I had a question. I put it on the chat window as well. So uh, we have suggested at the end that we should be using expectations propagation coder, right? So yeah. uh, do we have so far any uh, any research on that that uh, you earlier you used GSD decoder? So was it any better than the GSD one? The, is there a research? Uh, yes. Uh, Yes, uh, there are already some published paper on the EE-based uh, decoder for MIMO, for MIMO system already. And and the uh, major motivation for that is that EP uh, detector um, results in much lower complexity. So, yeah, but whereas in terms of the performance, uh, one, you know, that uh, it will be, a, you know, close to that of the generous sphere decoder. So if you are interested in that uh, research, you uh, you can send, probably you can send an email to me. I can forward you some, some paper. And we, if you are doing this research already, probably we can work together. Yeah. That would be great. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyone good. else has any, okay, please. So anyone else has any questions can put them in the chat. I think we had one, uh, somebody was asking, I think Paris Jan had given. Yes, yes, actually I asked for the mic access because uh, it was a lot to type. So uh, Dr. Liu, thank you for the enthralling session. Uh, my question was uh, that uh, there has been recent work done by Lynn et al for the deep learning approach as you mentioned in your talk, in your concluding section that uh, deep learning can be used uh, for uh, uh, DCMA techniques as well. So they have used it for XMA. They have yep. used these neural networks for sparse code multiple access. And yep. they have even shown that there's a better uh, uh, a better result in terms of BER. So what yep. are the uh, what are the problems and what are the obstacles when applying to DCMA that uh, are currently? Being yeah, I think uh, right now uh, you can see, uh, you have mentioned that, you know, there are already some paper using deep learning, for example, the auto encoder to design some new code book. And uh, if you look into those paper, actually, they just focus on the gouging channel. So, uh, but once we move to the relay feeding channel, uh, the, I think, uh, those uh, deep learning and tour may not work very well. So the the question here is still how we are going to you know uh, fully use the power of AI machine learning such that well, you know we can do we can we can design our system for more complex channel because uh, you know once we have the re relay feeding feeding channel each time you know we will when we run our simulation we will have the you know new channel feeding feeding game. So in this case, that uh, you know, we can we can see that the the code book 
generated from AI or from the deep learning tool may not work uh, very well. Yeah. Uh, uh, as far as I understand, pardon my paucity if I missed out something, but if we can incorporate the relay feeding channel and uh, uh, for, for DCMA, then the results might improve, right? Uh, I mean, I mean, right now, even for the sparse codebook design and for DCMA system design, uh, the, the current research, uh, you know, basically they all focus on the, the, the Gaussian channel. So it is very, a, you know, basically the, the, the design using deep learning is not uh, effective once, we, once the, the channel is relay feeding channel. Because the reason here is that relay feeding channel, the situation is more complex because, you know, each time we will have, a, you know, a new channel feeding feeding game. So that means that you need to search the code book and such the code book will, will work. Uh, very well, and then no matter how the the channel, you, you know, you, you know the channel feeding game is more or, or large, and then in in total, um, yeah, that will give me a very good uh, error rate performance. Very much. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, we have not too many else, so. Uh, Mohammad Hamza says that uh, thanks to now. I would like to know speaker's comment to part between NOMA in the multiple uh, in the multiple antenna transmission. Uh, I repeat, I'd like to ask speaker's comment on power domain in NOMA in multiple antenna transmissions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I think uh, this, uh, yeah, basically the, you know, power domain norma, power domain and norma is not my major research, uh, not my major research area. But I believe that, you know, there are uh, many, many, many papers, they consider the integration of uh, multiple, uh, you know, antenna with the, you know, power domain norma, norma system. Uh, but, uh, yeah, in comparison from the viewpoint of, uh, of the industry, uh, the cold domain norma is actually preferred. So, yeah, so I am not in a, a position to comment much on the uh, MIMO, uh, I mean, power domain norma and combined with, uh, with MIMO, yeah. All right. So there is another question by Tanvi Sopi. Uh, she asks, "What will be the security features, requirements, or advancements in 5G as compared to 4G?" Oh yeah, I think um, yeah. The in terms of the security one, um, uh, you know, 5G has a, a, a lot of major enhancement. Um, so basically, in the 4G system, you know the Control uh, uh, channel. The, the the control channel is fixed. So this means that as long as someone knows uh, where the control channel locates, you know we can easily generate some jamming signal to to interfere with that control uh, uh, channel. And then in this case, that the entire system may collapse. But for the 5G, we have a more dynamic control channel. So this means that, you know, for time one, you know, my control channel may lie in, in this uh, 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 previous band. But in time two, you know, my control channel may hop to another frequency band. So this uh, will actually um, bring us, uh, you know, um, a lot of uh, uh, the enhanced security for the whole system to be, a, um, yeah, away from some jamming interference. Uh, 
So in the in the end, this will help us to to improve the the, the system security. But I mean, if you want to talk about the security issue from some some other uh, perspective, so for example, from the cryptography point of view, um, yeah, that one I'm um, not able to comment a lot. Yeah, but from the controlling point of view, control channel point of view, already we we using we are using the uh, uh, you know frequency help the control channel to improve the system security. All right. So yep. there's one more question. Uh, it's a kind of more German one. So Yukti Mohan asks, which industries will benefit most from the five? Yeah, I think I think five G is just uh, you everywhere, okay, and uh, you know factory, you know hospital, you know city, home, you know five G just uh, everywhere, and it's like that we have a uh, you know numerous mod, you know uh, multiple virtual industry. But uh, the, there's one virtual industry which will shape the future of 5G, which will determine f whether 5G will be successful or not. That is uh, V2X communication. Because, you know, the V2X communication is the, uh, is one of the, the major vertical, uh, uh, you know, e is, a, what, is a major enabler for us to, to uh, design the uh, you know autonomous driving system. So uh, and uh, whether five G will be successful a lot, uh, it will uh, basically we um, yeah we 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 will see that whether the market will buy it a lot. All right. So I think this was the last question. Uh, I I do have a question uh, more uh, related to students who are listening to us so, because uh, we have a student branch attached with us in this collaboration. So my question was: uh, We are all BTEC students for now. So do we have any opportunities for research or otherwise in the University of Excess? As we have you from there, so we wish to know more about the University of Excess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, in fact, in, in my university each year, you know, there might be some PhD scholarship. And so you can contact with uh, our faculty member to, to see that whether you, I mean, if your academic performance is very good and you may be selected to do a PhD, or you can consider to do a master degree in, in University of Essex. And, uh, um, yeah, other than in there, now I'm actually working with, uh, you know, a, a couple of PhD students from Triple IT Delhi, and and uh, and actually my my friend uh, uh, Dr. Rivera Bahara is an you know, associate professor there, and also uh, and Professor uh, you know, Anai, who recommended me here to deliver this talk. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we have many ways to to uh, collaborate, work, working working together because of the the you know one is communication, and we can even you are you know thousands of miles away, and we have no no problem in communicating. Right. Yeah. So I would ask the uh, Rakshit to take over. The All right, so like I was saying before, once again, I'd like to thank Sir for being so patient with us for answering all our queries in detail on behalf of IEEE MSIT. Apart from that, I'd also like to thank uh, Professor Anubha Gupta from IIIT Delhi for making this happen. And at last, I'd like to thank all the attendees and SPS Delhi chapter for making this event such 
a huge success. And I'd especially like to thank uh, Sachin Motwani from SPS Delhi chapter for his help in conducting this event. Thank you all of you for being here. With this, I'd like to conclude the event.